All right, we're gonna try this again. Last time I played this game, I wasn't very, uh, I guess charitable is the, uh, I guess charitable would be the proper way to, uh, this proper description of how I acted with it. I wasn't a big fan of it, but, you know, I figure why not try some Telltale games for a little while. Because it's been a while since I played a Telltale game on this channel. Yeah, show goals, I guess. Starring Telltale games. Alright, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 1.18 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Ainy. Hey, boy, get in there. <coughs> I think the reason why I wasn't so, get down. I guess, get on. That's it. Whoa, I wasn't as big whoa. a fan okay. with it was, uh... Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Back to the Future is my favorite movie, so... Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. I don't know. I know this is a hugely popular game, but... You got that thing hooked up to the... car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. I don't know. I'm, I'm a big fan of this, though. With the... I'm a big fan of the book, but not the game, necessarily, I don't think. Not me. The car. The car. But I do like Telltale games. Personally, my favorite is my uh, calculations are correct. The Wolf Among, among Us. You can't beat that game, I also was a big fan of uh, shit. Uh, Tales from the Borderlands. And the, the uh, Batman one wasn't watch bad this, either. Watch this. He disintegrated Einstein. That's what he says in the movie, anyway. Hot Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Doc. He disintegrated Einstein. Come down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. But where the hell are they? The appropriate the question, question is, is when, when the, the hell, hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. You built a time machine out of a DeLorean? <laughs> we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flush dispersal. Look out! Uh, Doc? Oh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuit. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Okay. Notebook, notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's... 
Mass equals I times C, and E equals the square root of Z times C squared. Doc, uh, something's way off here. Uh, Doc? Great Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake! Doc! Doc, no! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Marty, is everything okay? Yeah, Mom, I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's Miami waiting Vice poster. for you. Weird huh? science. Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc? That's cool. Holy crap, I'm late. Actually, I am pretty excited. I haven't played this game since I got it. <laughs> really? Well, four years ago was the last time I played this one, so. Too late to stop the sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's doc stuff. The city has no right now, to. Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell bent on using his land for that new parking garage. And hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. At least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty. Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... remembering. I miss Einstein. Oh. A fish tank? I never knew Doc raised fish. Doc's fish had weird taste in decor. I kind of like Doc. Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can't intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? Hey, Dad. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly. What's Biff doing here? He wasn't a friend of Doc's. It's a public sale, Marty. Everyone's allowed. <laughs> Even Biff. <laughs> I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know... Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. 
Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. Do you think dreams can predict the future? I'm going to put subtitles on if there are any subtitles. <clears throat> Let's find out. Yeah, I'll have the hints do that. <laughs> There we go. Let's have it back to normal. Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff. But I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. What did you dream? Oh, just... <laughs> weird stuff. Yeah, about Doc. Well, that's understandable, don't you think? I guess, but... I feel like it was telling me something. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Doc built this model at Downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Ow. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. You know, you and my folks go way back. Yeah, so? So how about letting me have that model courthouse uh, for old time's sake? Nah, I think I'll keep it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me to... Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. <laughs> Hey, Dad, why is my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Here we go. I remember this part. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> Hey, look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now, Biff, I think that's Marty's guitar. Uh, oh, uh, gosh, uh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Oh, here you go, Marty. Let's hear a few licks. Wow, that was sizzling hot, like a melting ice cube. Let's make some noise. I better not crank it up anymore. I really don't want to blow this thing out again. And now, something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming them up for me, butthead. Biff. I thought I told you not to take my son's guitar. Oh, right. Uh, sure thing, Mr. McFly. Uh, I was just warming him up for you, Marty. Let's see what you got. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. Okay, I remember that part, but what's up with here? Hey, Dad. About Biff. There Dad, we go. I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, 
I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son. I'll stay out of your way. You know where to find me. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. There we go. You want to hear a number by Biff and the Biff Tones? Always happy to play for my adoring fans. <laughs> like in the movie. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. Whoa! Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. Ah, uh, Doc, where are you? Einstein! Oh. Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? Retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I programmed the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you come to my rescue in the past, or was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Aren't you gonna tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading marked Last Time Departed. Good luck. Right, right, Last Time Departed, Last Time Departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on, come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. L3? Okay. What do you know about this shoe, Aini? Great Scott! I think he's onto something! Great Scott, I know, this is heavy. <laughs> I think that's from the second Back to the Future. I'm not sure, I don't remember. There's okay. the ord again, heavy. Is that with the gravitational pull in the future? How's this supposed to lead me to dock, Aini? Einstein, come on! Just as I suspected. Hooligans! Get along now! Scat! Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. Uh, 
a shoe. Wow, now what would I want with a... Huh? <gasps> Stay there! I remember this part. That's the only reason why I remember it. Or that's the only reason why I'm able to do it. <laughs> Einstein. Rude. Einstein's a good dog. She doesn't need to be so mean to him. <coughs> well, took you long enough. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Mm, much better. So neat and orderly. Nah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. <laughs> Nine out of ten people. Sorry, I gotta move my microphone. Just a little. Don't touch those! My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street <sighs> punk get jam all over them. Principal Strickland? Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. What are these? My editorial trophies. Cat Lover's Quarterly. Hm. It's legitimate journalism. <laughs> it's funny. Einstein brought me that shoe from the past. But when in the past? Uh, Miss Strickland, about your tea. Uh, you forgot to turn on the... You! It's spelled with a U! You illiterate vandal! <laughs> uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! <laughs> yes? Remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! <laughs> Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But. Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh. Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes. The day that speakeasy burned down. A speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. <laughs> Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition 
was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny! Yeah, you yeah, generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe things about history. Miss Strickland? A video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. <laughs> Doing some stargazing? Oh, I set my sights on it. Lower things. Is that? Jim Tannen! Get away <laughs> from that hubcap before I call your father! I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Ah, she is rude. Don't let me keep you from your business. Ow. You there! Don't even think about tossing that Kleenex on the ground! <laughs> I think you have to use the radiator to uh, distract her, but that tea's never gonna boil. If I remember correctly, man, she keeps it hot in here. That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. Then don't touch anything. <laughs> It's like a grouchy version of my grandmother. So I remember newspaper. Juveniles collide with manure truck. <laughs> nice picture. Brown mansion destroyed. 1962. No, no, that's not where Doc's stranded. All right, Einstein brought me this shoe, and Miss Strickland lost the shoe on the day the speakeasy burned down. But when did the speakeasy burn down? I at least need to know the year. Hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. Nineteen thirty two. Rebuilt in February, nineteen thirty two. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Don't Goodness. look at me. I'm far too old for you. <laughs> Remember the kettle will keep getting her up. So The water's boiling by now. Don't call me Shirley. Let's see. Ground broken on site of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. 
Soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. I did it. My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let no! me... No! You've gotten my history out of order! Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Help! Police! I'm being attacked by hooligans! <laughs> I'm being attacked by hooligans! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? Uh, didn't I tell you? I, I got the lead in the school play. Well, we're doing... Grapes of Wrath? Right. Oh, Steinbeck. Who are you playing? Um, uh... Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. You ready to go, Einstein? Oh, Einstein's a good puppy. I'm sure Duke would be like that with me. Duke, where are you? Duke? He's under the mattress. Time circuits. Or he's under the mattress, ah, the table. Flux capacitor. Uh, fluxy. Okay. If Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Cliffhanger. Almost. <laughs> Let's see if you bastards can do ninety. <laughs> Turn the movie. And we're taking a break.